welcome back. It's been a while, and uh, delighted to have in the studio with us today our good friend, Father uh, Seraphim Cordoza. He is um, the uh, arch priest. Is that right? Yeah. I'm getting it right. At the St. Innocent's Orthodox, Russian Orthodox Church in Rogue River. So if you are on Interstate 5 in Southern Oregon and you're heading north or south and you come through Rogue River, you'll see this incredible building being built. Uh, in fact, the outside is just about done. And um, this is a, a miracle in the making. And that's been a long time coming, but that's what's happening. And we'll talk about that. But good to see you. How are you? I'm really doing fine. You look great. Yeah, I feel great. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's just yeah. just yeah. trying to trust God and move forward. Huh? Yeah, you, you, you think I'll ever learn to trust Him completely? Well, that's uh, uh, that's the daily challenge, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It uh, is. Give us an update. You you've been building this now for how long? And where are you? And we've been building this building uh, for seven years. Seven years. And. Um, Actually, I was interviewed the other day by someone not as good looking as you, but I was I was interviewed, and uh, and and uh, I always explain, it's beautiful, it really is, mm -hmm. but it's pretty much what you'd see if you went to Russia. Mm -hmm. By the way, just in the capital of Russia this year, they're building 400 cathedrals. 400. 400. Really. And you know, and, and we send missionaries over there. Mm -hmm. Maybe it should be. They send them back. Maybe yeah. they should come back over here. You know. Yeah. But anyways, it's been seven years, and I always explain, you know, for between 25 and 35 people, it's a miracle. And I started seven years ago and saying, unless the Lord builds the house, the laborer, the builder labors in vain. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, to this day, I believe it. To this day, I believe that that truly is going to be a, a, an evangelistic picture of heaven. My dream, Perry, is your dream. That everybody touches heaven. Mm -hmm. And that's been my dream that when people, you know, thousands of people every day drive by. Yeah. And I purposely put it out there where they'd almost run into it. Yeah. That that they would think that there's something other than this planet. Mm -hmm. There's even there's even something other than what we are and what we do. I come out of the post office the other day and this gentleman, many, many non-Orthodox, 99% mm -hmm. are non, mm -hmm. they're good Christians, they're, they're praying mm -hmm. for me and all so on and so forth. He says, I, every time I drive by your church, it makes me think of heaven. Good. And so that's exactly why they're built that way. Well, it's white with gold trim and just vibrant blue cupolas on top, the mushroom things. Yeah. And uh, it's just beautiful. All right, so you're pretty much done with the outside. I know you got a lot of landscaping to do, but inside you're still kind of in the in the raw. We're still like we were, Perry. Mm -hmm. We're still, um, uh, it's not that we're broke. We're one step <laughs> closer to that. Yeah. But we we, uh, we have the inside to do. And Orthodox churches, temples, replicas of heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, inside they rep we represent the saints and represent all the gospels in picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we have a lot. We have uh, elect, trying to find an electrician. Anybody you talk to now, they got four months for leave and talk to you. Yeah. So we're having a difficult time. For, uh, we have everything else for the inside. I think as far as mechanical, we need an electrician. We're going to need a sheet. Some to do the sheetrock. Uh, these are expensive items. But that's where we are. All right. Well, let me just say, our viewers and listeners, uh, you can go to their website. Um, Saint, uh, what is it? Which website? It's uh, Saint Innocent Orthodox. There's a picture of it, uh, the outside oh, and the oh, inside. Oh. So uh, anyway, Saint Anthony, Saint Innocent, excuse me, Orthodox Church, and you can check it out there. Uh, there it was in the snow, absolutely gorgeous. So anyway, help them out, um, get the bells going. Let's get the inside built. Let's get this all taken care of. Okay. Hey, I want to talk to you about something. Yeah, of course. Um, <clears throat> I'm really concerned about the discourse of our culture. We have become anything but civil. The acrimony is unbelievable. The disdain for one another, the division. Um, and you know what? A lot of our fellow believers are caught up in this. And I'm, I'm really concerned about it. God called us to be the thermostat, not the thermometer. We're to set the culture temperature, not react to it. But we're caught up in it. Um, 
Have you ever talked about that in any of your homilies about being civil? All the and... time. Perry, we're supposed to bring the church, the people of God, where we worship, how we worship, what we look like, what we sound like. We're supposed to bring it into the world. Remember, I'm a former evangelical pastor, and I'm thankful for that. We brought the world into the church, and that's exactly what happens. And so, yes, yes, you know, I speak to people all the time, and so do you. And how many do you meet? Nine out of ten are turned off from church. They're turned off from people. They're turned off from, you know, I'm a, I'm a practice, I'm, I'm a, I'm a non-practicing this. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. a non-practicing. How are you a non-practicing? You either yeah. are or you aren't. Right. Yes, and our culture is mixed up. You know, just talk, just being civil. For the last several weeks, it's been on my mind. You know, you preach it. I've preached it for 49 years now. It's love. We know that. The mm. greatest is love. We know that. But how do you love? Is there tough love so we go beating people up with the gospel? <laughs> yeah. Is it weak love where you act, excuse me, more feminine than you do masculine? Mm -hmm. You were made what you were made. What kind of love is it? And I get this all the time. Why don't we just start with being kind? Mm. Why don't we just start with being kind to each other? When I walk in here, you know, how many people do I see? Maybe one will come up, how's it going with the smile and everything else? Mm -hmm. And that's about it. What's wrong with it? And I always try to do it first. Mm -hmm. That's just how I am. You know, how you do? How, and not, I'm not trying to be phony. Mm -hmm. I want to be that way. Can't we just be kind? Maybe I dress different. Maybe you don't understand myself. I think I understand you because I came from that background. Mm -hmm. And I don't judge you. You know, can't we just be kind? Can't we just have respect? I respect you. I respect you for what you're doing. I respect you, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Why can't we just show respect? Our younger people, how many in here? Mm -hmm. Your younger people. I'm not much better than them, but I'm probably 40 years or 50 years older than most of them. How many have respect just for age? Okay, they don't like my hat, <laughs> they don't like my beard, they don't like me, okay. But can you respect my age? Mm. Can you respect I've had the same spiritual battles you've had? Can you respect I've had the same temptations you've had? Can you respect I love the same God you love? Mm -hmm. Can, you know, I don't see respect. I, I get it all the time. Forgive me from Protestant evangelical pastors. They watch, they watch this program and they are very interested. They are very interested in the Orthodox faith. They're very interested in our worship. They're very interested in the respect. They're very interested in the respect we have for heaven. They're very interested in the respect we have for the kingdom of heaven. They're very interested in why we respect even the saints, those totally sanctified men and women, you know? And I, and I see a total lack of respect. I wonder if our, our churches, our, at least somewhat accountable. Uh, I don't think, do we just teach people it's all about music and feel good? What's wrong with seeing how good we can make our neighbor's life better? That's not works. I get this all the time, oh, the Catholics and you guys are into works. Oh my God, please mm -hmm. go away, will you? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with just trying to make everyone you meet make their life better? Just start with kindness. And that goes into our politics, and that goes into our being unashamed. And that. People don't understand why well, you and I get along. I love you, man. I don't <laughs> care what anybody says. I'm unashamed to say it. Mm -hmm. I love you. I love what you do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, that, that's, just, that's just the way it is. Well, I, I think you're touching on something here, Father Seraphim, and that is, is that um, the world is starving for something different, something that is uh, shows that there is a God and that He is, uh, that He does love you. Um, I'm wondering, boy, I want to say this carefully, but you kind of wonder, have we over-merchandised Him? Of course you have. You know what I mean by that? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah. I mean, when's the last time you hired a pastor because of His holiness and not because He's a good manager? Mm. Come on, isn't that part of what this guy knows? Is He a good manager? He has a degree in this, He has a degree in that. Does He have a degree in prayer? Does he have a degree in truly giving his heart 
truly given his heart and unashamed of it in front of everybody? Does he have that kind of degree? Mm -hmm. Of course we're responsible. Uh, and I see more and more, please forgive me, I'm not picking mm -hmm. on anybody. Yeah. I get calls from evangelical pastors all the time, all the time. They, they're just, I, I, and I tell them all, it's probably partly your fault. You so why do they call you? What are they asking? This program. Yeah, but why, what are they asking? What do they want from you that they can't get for themselves? I guess some of the YouTubes that uh, are out there. Uh, in other words, men are made to be men. We are made to be pastors. We're made to be unashamed of God. We put him first place of honor in everything. That means everything, not mm -hmm. just while I'm on this program. Right. That means in our business. That means with our tongue. You know, uh, I'm talking a lot today, so maybe I had too much coffee. <laughs> but, 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 but you know, you're the one who corrected me. It was St. Francis who said, preach the gospel all the time, sometimes use words. Yeah, right. We're responsible. But we teach our young ones, at least I did years ago, of course we're unashamed of Christ. Of course we want to talk about our Lord. Of course we do. Mm -hmm. But can we just be kind? All right. Talk to uh, Father Seraphim today. And by the way, SaintInnocentOrthodoxChurch.org is the website here uh, for his uh, parish. Saint Innocent, that's ST, excuse me, then InnocentOrthodoxChurch.org. And um, we're going to come back and continue on with uh, how do we improve the civility of our conversation today? We'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, what a delight to have in the studio with us today our good friend, uh, Father Seraphim. He is the uh, priest at the, uh, I should say the archpriest, at the St. Innocent Orthodox Church in Southern Oregon. And that's also how you get to their website, St. St. and then InnocentOrthodoxChurch.org. Uh, and if you are in Southern Oregon, everybody knows who this person is because out on Interstate 5, uh, just as you enter into the Rogue River area, you'll see on the east side of the freeway the most beautiful building that has now come up out of the ground. It's only taken seven years to get this far. <laughs> uh, it's uh, a white building, blue trim, blue and gold trim. They got the cupolas on top, blue, and then the gold one. And the bells came from Russia. And um, this is a miracle in the making. And then now it's left to get the interior done. And... Um, so if, uh, they need help uh, financially and otherwise, maybe in kind, maybe you're an electrician, you're a sheetrocker or whatever, you can get a hold of them through their website and uh, let's get this thing completed. It is absolutely gorgeous. It just stands out. And so um, get a hold of them at saintinnocentorthodoxchurch.org. We're talking about our, our civility, uh, even among believers. Um, I'm really concerned <coughs> the... the um, the incivility of our conversation, the acrimony towards one another, the uh, sarcasm, the um, it, it just, just it, it's just gotten and the cynicism, the level of cynicism. So I read an article the other day that they think that cynicism may be the new social cancer of our day. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, that's an interesting way of putting it. It's kind of like a stage four cancer in our culture. Yeah. And uh, what concerns me, Father Seraphim, is that our witness as believers goes. It's just out the door if we get caught up in this. We, it's not that we want to be snobbish and arrogant and above it. We want to be loving, but we can't enter it. And I've got to tell you, I think it's becoming a real struggle for a lot of us. It is. You know, we, uh, if we're not careful, we make our faith external. And it is. Witnessing, of course we witness. Yeah. Preaching, of course we preach. What you do, may God bless you, of course but you know, the battle really is in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe we need to talk a little bit more about the battle is in our thoughts. If we would start with our thoughts, if we would, you know, sometimes we, 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 we do, we, we minor in the majors, of course, adultery and so on and so forth. Of course, we all know that drunkenness, mm -hmm. but how about judging one another? You know, I'm not saying if a person is doing wrong, I'm, you know, that's wrong, you're beating your wife. What's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. I'm going to probably try to stop you. 
But I think it's just judging. This judging, you know, uh, I, I dressed this way for 49 years now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I have to admit, when I first came to this area, the non-Christians were much kinder than the Christians. They didn't understand. They would follow me around. They would accuse me Christians with their Bibles, thumping their Bibles at me. Mm -hmm. And here I've, I was an evangelical pastor for 18 years. I could thump back, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe if we talk more about in our parishes about, well, we do because that's our, that's our heritage, the guarding of the heart, our thoughts. You know, it starts with our thoughts, and it starts with, it starts with judging. Well, let me ask you this then. And I think you're right. I, I think that there is a struggle between heart and head. You know, What's wrong putting your head in your heart? Yeah, well, there you go. Um, there's a struggle. But is part of our struggle because we don't necessarily, well, let me rephrase this, that maybe we have lost the understanding of the holiness of God? You hit it. Now, your church, who I, that's where I started yeah. almost 50 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, they preached holiness. And it was really a teaching of holiness. And I mean, it was holiness. And it had to, maybe it went a little bit over, a little bit <laughs> this way. Mm -hmm. But you know, and, and yeah, no drinking, no smoking, blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay, okay. But they really, they really preached the external and they preach sanctification. And that got me. This idea that I could truly, yes, truly give God not the bottom part of my heart or the top or the middle, but all of it. This idea. And yes, it's going to be a struggle till I die with my thoughts, with all of us. Why are we not honest with each other? Why can't I tell you I had this dumb thought? Pray for me, because that's where the battle is. Most of us won't admit it, especially the Orthodox do, because we have a great teaching on that. And we have a weapon for that. You know, it's the mind and the heart. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. Have mercy. Not that I'm a bad boy, I'm no good. Be all you are to me. Because he knows our thoughts, our intents, and our purposes. Our heart mm -hmm. has a brain. It's not just a conscience, it has a brain. Mm -hmm. And I think if we would preach more about heart, we'd catch ourselves being more kind, less judgmental. When I walk in this place, I'm not picking on anybody, <laughs> but you know what? What's wrong with the smile? Okay, so let's go back to this. Uh, that would suggest that our heart is possibly polluted. Yes. Which would require us to be honest and say, wait a minute, um, I can't let this be. I got to get this out. You got it. And that comes to something that your tradition, Catholic tradition, does, I think, very well, this thing called confession. Excuse me. Yeah. That's the tradition of the church since Christ. Okay. Since you, you know the scriptures better than I do, although I don't want to admit that. But you some, should. Somewhere, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Somewhere in the scriptures, yeah. confess your faults one to another, you will be healed. Yeah. Somewhere in the scriptures, after, five. after our Lord was resurrected, mm. whatever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. He's talking to his apostles and their successors. Whatever sins you retain, they are retained. Whatever you forgive on earth is forgiven in heaven. Whatever you don't forgive on earth. Is, and, and it starts with forgiveness. It's interesting. You know history better than I do. But what did that early church do? We were talking about oneness and love and kindness. Mm. And it happens during most revivals, by the way, real revivals. You'll know when it's a real revival. The people would confess their sins out where everyone could hear. There was that kind of love, that kind of non-judging, that kind of obeying the scriptures, confess your faults one to another and you will be healed. Well, that's the first part. Yes, we, it's not just Catholic or Orthodox. That's mm. church tradition. That's all the way back to Christ. If it was my tradition or man's tradition, you can go to a psychiatrist and do that. Okay. Psychiatrists can't touch that deep of your heart. Only God can. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, excuse me. I don't, no. I don't, I don't mean No, no, no. I, I, I think this is the issue because we can't be kind if, we're, if we don't have kindness in our heart, you if, can't. It's, if yeah. it's being blocked by something. Yeah. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yeah. So if all of this, this uh, animus 
words, yeah. expression, and language is coming out of us. It's because we haven't come clean to, we haven't, maybe we haven't come clean before God. Confess your faults one to another. So they did confess their faults one to another. And then, of course, you know, the Romans sent spies in to see what these people were doing. And we have a report way back to that time. And the spy came back and said, like a bunch of frogs around the pond, they croaked their sins out where everybody could hear. You see? And all of a sudden, the people that say, I'm a non practicing, mm -hmm. started to come into the churches. So you don't want to confess your sins to people that are non practicing. They may go tell the world. And so the priest, who just represents the people, he is not any better. Um, a servant of God, I hope, he just represents the people by con all he is is a witness. And if you could ever hear the prayer, Perry, you, I could say so many good things about you, but I won't because I'll embarrass you. Mm -hmm. But I have seen more healing, genuine, mental, physical, spiritual healing during the confessional. And I, before I was Orthodox, I used to go to these prayer meetings and healing services. Mm -hmm. I did all that. And I saw some stuff. Yeah. And, and by God's grace, I, you know. It was real. Yeah. yeah. It was real stuff. Yeah. But, but you know, I think, I think when we got so smart that we were depending more on the psychiatrists and psychologists than we were the grace of God and humility. Perry, I told you a lot of things and I probably gone overboard as an Orthodox. I have no problem confessing my faults to you and asking your prayers. I have no problem. My confessor is another priest because he's been blessed with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's not any better. He's a witness, just like I am. So we have confession. You, you commit adultery where? In your heart? Didn't, in, didn't he say that? That's where it mm -hmm. was? How many uh, people are stuck with a computer watching something they shouldn't? Mm -hmm. If that's not adultery in your heart, I don't know what is. And until that is confessed, and you know as well as I know, they don't get over that so quick. Yeah. And it's more than just mental, it's a spiritual thing. And I hope, they re hope someone's listening. And you better get the confession quick, and you better really get to a place of repentance where you truly make a total change of everything and start going the other way. And then, in this you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. And then you take the body and blood of Christ. It's not just Catholic, it's not just Orthodox, it's not just Episcopalian or whatever. Mm -hmm. The church, our Lord said it. And that's exactly what they did. They went to confession, and they received the body and blood of Christ. And that's a lot to do with. Look, I have, I have one leading psychiatrist in Boston, that's my spiritual son, and I have one, I'm not bragging, mm -hmm. but I have one leading the neuro, child neurosurgeon, my spiritual daughter. They have a confessor. These people are truly godly, but they have their confessor. And that's what keeps them on track. And, and I, everyone, I know we talk about accountability, I know, mm -hmm. and, and we had accountability groups. It was different when I, I have to tell you, when I went to a priest and I heard that saying, may our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, forgive you, my child, all your transgressions. And I, the unworthy priest, he mentions his name, by the grace of God, forgive you for all your thoughts, words, intentionally or unintentionally, and intentions, non-intentional. And he makes a sign of the cross on your head. And in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you know it's God that's touched you. If the priest believes it, if the person confessing believes it, miracle after miracle. I think, I know, I know our, I know our church is now again all into teaching, teaching, mm -hmm. teaching, teaching. You know what, I wonder if that's the answer. I wonder if the answer is it more just being honest. Well, I think the world is hungry to see something more. Yeah. From the church. That's yeah. the sense I feel, yeah. you know, and it has to start with us. Let me say to our viewers, we're out of time. We could talk to them all day. St. Innocent Orthodox Church.org is the website, and uh, you can go there and learn more about the church, and uh, moreover, help them uh, finish this building. It is a testament to really the whole Southern Oregon region. St. Innocent Orthodox Church.org. Thank you, Father Seraphim. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> okay. We'll see you next time.